This city is probably one of the more altered ecosystems on Earth. In fact, uh, like most cities, it's been managed for over 100 years as if it was a slab of concrete. And as a result of that, because of the size population we have and the amount of resources we have to bring here, water, food, energy, and the amount of semi-used resources we have to move out, Los Angeles is probably one of the largest contributors to pollution on the planet. Most people look at Los Angeles and consider us way off the chart in terms of places that can or should be saved when you look at the whole earth. We have the ability to change all of that. If we begin to recognize the natural ecosystem that's here and begin to treat the land as if it was a living ecosystem and begin to manage the city and its infrastructure as if we were managing a whole living piece of the planet. The challenge is that neither LA nor most any other city has ever done that. and. The good news is that Los Angeles is beginning to. We haven't made many changes yet, but fundamentally the changes are beginning to start in how the city and the county and various different agencies are working together. They're beginning to plan the management of this city as an ecosystem, and it's beginning to be very encouraging, but we have a very, very long way to go. It was 10 years ago, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers announced that they were going to spend a half a billion dollars in Los Angeles. They were actually going to be pouring more concrete to solve a flooding problem. We had so overpaved this town that water rushed very quickly to the storm drains, what used to be the rivers. And those storm drains, which were designed to handle a 100-year flood, a 500-year flood, could no longer handle a 50-year flood. So the city was under threat of being flooded with the next major, major storm. We thought, this is crazy. It won't create long-term jobs. It won't get us the water that we so badly need. All it does is sort of worsen the problem. If we could get agencies to cooperate and work together and manage Los Angeles as a watershed, as a forest, as a whole living system, then we could maybe solve the problem. It's amazing. Los Angeles receives enough water every year in a normal rainfall year to meet half its needs. But the city spends close to a billion dollars a year to bring in water. That water that falls here, instead of falling on the land and soaking into the earth, it rushes off because of how we've covered two-thirds of the land over with concrete and houses and parking lots. We're throwing away close to a half a billion dollars worth of water. So we said, could you? instead of raising the walls of the river, spend that money to take out the concrete and capture the water and put it back in the ground where we need it and, and save it and use it. And they said, no, it's too expensive. It's much cheaper to pour more concrete. Um, and we said, but there is a water supply benefit, not just a flood control. And they said, well, we can't count the water supply benefit. We just, our job mostly is flood control. And so we went to the water supply people and said, isn't this water worth something to you? And they said, yeah, it would be wonderful to have it. And we said, well, wouldn't it be great if we could capture it and put it in the ground and store it in tanks so it could be used here so you don't have to import so much? And they said it would be wonderful, but it's too expensive. And so I said, well, what would happen if we made the project do both flood control and water supply? Then it wouldn't be too expensive. In fact, then it's cheaper. And people agreed, but they said, but our cost-benefit mechanisms don't allow us to do multi-purpose. We, you know, we have a single-purpose mission and a single-purpose mission and the twain don't meet. And then we started counting other kinds of benefits. One of the best things to get water in the ground is mulch, what comes off our trees and lawns. Well, in Los Angeles, only about 2% of the gardens are mulched. That beautiful product that is on the floor of every forest. What fall, falls out of trees, we scrape it up, blow it with leaf blowers, put it into trash cans and haul it to landfills. But we're not keeping it where it belongs. It's gold and it should be on the ground in every yard to act as a sponge, to act as a filter, to get the water in the ground. The city, the county spent a lot of money picking up that green waste and hauling it off and processing it. We have a lot of money being spent on wastewater. Water that we use in our sinks, in our showers, in our laundry, it's called gray water. It's contaminated with soap and dirt, but it's not polluted, it's not dangerous, it's not biologically harmful. 
and it can be easily filtered and put right back in the ground to irrigate our plants. But the city is looking at spending billions to build new treatment plants to handle the additional water that's going to be thrown at them by an increased population and also to treat the water to higher standards. So there's a fourth element that could be brought in. We knew that if we could get these agencies to work together, there was enough money without even finding new money, just with what was already planned. In fact, we identified about 10 to 20 billion dollars worth of planned expenditures in water supply, wastewater, flood control, sanitation, that if we could get everyone to cooperate and use that money, we could build the right projects and we wouldn't even have to go find new money. We wanted to show that agencies could combine their efforts, could save money, and could come up with much better solutions that led to a healthier city. We brought a hundred of the best minds in sustainable landscape, architecture, engineering, and city management together to rethink this city. The city and the county took those ideas and incorporated some of them into some of their new policies. In the process, we started getting everybody to work together. The U.S. Forest Service invested as the first challenge grant. The EPA joined them. The City of Los Angeles, the Department of Water and Power, County Department of Public Works, they all ultimately joined the team, helped fund it, and started taking the data. So we did the design work, and then we did the economics. This time we took 200 agency scientists and economists and spent two years working with them in separate teams to look at air quality, water quality, water supply, jobs, and other aspects of this. We got them all to combine their data and we put it all into a computer model to show what would happen if we brought everyone together, where the savings could be, where the jobs could be created. It showed that if we began to treat the land right, all of a sudden, all these things come together and make lovely sense. We wind up saving water upstream, protecting fish all the way up in the San Francisco Bay, protecting human health in communities that are getting polluted, saving water, saving energy, lowering even our contribution to global warming. We did all this work, this design work, and we came up with some lovely designs, and one of them we built. We took a simple home in South Los Angeles. We applied four simple designs to capture all the water. We put in a cistern. We sunk the lawn so we could capture the rain, fall from the roof, and put it into the ground. We put a little drain in the driveway and picked up all the water and ran it through a filter and put that in the ground. We also collected all the green waste and made beautiful mulch swales in the yard so the landscape could retain water, conserve water, filter it, and nothing had to be going to the landfill in the green bin. As agency economists and skeptics and others came to look at this, they said, oh my God, it works. We made the changes so attractive so people would want to do it instead of having to be forced to do it. And sure enough, from the one simple house in, in South LA, everyone could see that, oh, this is easy. People will do it. And in fact, people want to do it. So we were able to begin building this partnership between the people and agencies. So the challenge became, once we had established the spirit of partnership with the public and agencies, was actually to extend that partnership to multiple agencies so they could come together as a team and look at this ecosystem as a whole. There's nobody whose job it is to look at the whole ecosystem, to look at the whole environment in this city, in this county, in the state. Just like we would want a doctor to do for us. We'd want someone to look at our whole body and say, how are your systems working together? Do we need a heart specialist? Do we need a blood specialist? Do we need a lung specialist? And we began to talk to different agencies, water supply, sanitation, roads, parks, and say, we can see how you could work together and save money and make this a healthier city. And everyone's response was, we don't do that. The city is designed for us to work in our separate different agencies. If we work together, it's too big. There's no way to make that happen. We're not authorized to. We lose control of what we're responsible for and what we're held accountable for. It's just not gonna work. And so we began looking for ways that we could build partnerships amongst agencies. We were building the mechanisms that said it's possible, it's feasible. And all these wonderful partnerships have now started to emerge. Early in the process, when we were suggesting that there was a better way than just simply pouring more concrete, we got into a little bit of a conflict with one agency, the, the County Department of Public Works, because we were suggesting this multi-purpose approach that 
they weren't really familiar with or authorized to do. But once we had proven it and demonstrated it, the current head of county flood control, Carl Bloom, had an epiphany. He saw that, my god, this is doable. It works, and it could be relatively inexpensive. Let's try this on a much bigger scale. Because if you're right, and we think you are, this needs to be blown up and done city and countywide as quickly as possible. And even with that, it'll take at least 50 years to fix the problem. But he challenged us to, to blow it up from one house to an entire watershed of 8,000 homes where they had a, a flooding problem that they weren't able to solve for 30 years. It was going to cost almost $50 million to build a storm drain to get rid of yet more water. In the process of the learning and the exploration, Carl Bloom began to do a strategic analysis of his own agency. And he actually reorganized the major piece of county public works and created the Watershed Management Division as a whole new integrated group whose job it was to manage that water. Once the county began this integrated operation, the whole notion started to spread. And right behind that, the city Storm Water Management Division looked at their operation and they reformulated themselves and created the Watershed Protection Division. And now we're working with all of them to expand this partnership and bring integrated urban forest watershed management to the city. And some very exciting things are starting to happen. This success doesn't rely simply on agencies saying, okay, let's make the city better. It has to be in exact partnership, lockstep with community. From kids to parents to neighborhoods to churches, synagogues, mosques, people have to join together to make the change happen where they live. They've got to own it. They've got to drive it because all of us individuals really are the managers of, of the environment. It's going to require an aggressive education and outreach effort. Tree People has been building that. We have the citizen forester training, which finds people who want to see their neighborhoods improved, and they're trained to gather the community together, create a shared vision of what they want on their street, what they want in their neighborhood or in their school, and begin to actually do it, and work as partners with government agencies who might provide them with some or all of the resources to make it happen. We're here with volunteers, with training, with trucks, with tools, with insurance, because to make this happen takes action. To get the concrete and the asphalt out of the ground and get trees back in, to get those trees cared for, requires support. And that's really right at the core of Tree People. Training, tools, action, volunteers, to help back up communities in seeing their dream come true. It's been a little while since that last conversation, and the issues that we touched on of climate change and the economy have only grown much worse. But the good news is the solutions that we've been building have also grown in scale to be able to match that and help solve them together. It's really important now that we begin to shift our cities not only to fight climate change, but to adapt and protect our people. We've taken the solutions and scaled them up. From the one home, we've now built six demonstration projects, two parks, two schools, an intersection. And when it rains one inch in Los Angeles, we capture one and a quarter million gallons of water. So in a rainfall year with very little rainfall, we've already captured 12 million gallons. We'll take that and imagine a small 10,000 gallon cistern on each of a million homes. 10 billion gallons every time it rains an inch. It winds up producing jobs by the tens of thousands, saving water, saving money, recycling people's energy and money right into the community. But we've also taken the concept and we've been driving it right into the community, with the community, through our education programs. Right here is a revolutionary watershed education center. Its purpose is to give everybody who comes here a whole new lens on how to see their world and to see that they have a role as a problem solver, as a manager of the ecosystem, as a watershed manager. We have the city before it was paved, the natural watershed and creek and its beauty, and then we take the city, pave it, they see the pain and the problems, and then third phase, they see the city healed, how they can do it with their own hands, on their home, on their street, on their school, on their park. When you combine the trees, the mulch, the technology of the cisterns, all together is what we call the functioning community forest. It's a vision for how we can retrofit any city to make it healthy, safe, fun, and sustainable.